Welcome back to Art 371, Intro to Projection Mapping. Today's lesson is going to be focused on how to integrate Malumin and After Effects. In our last lesson, I went over how to use Siphon to be able to integrate uh, other programs like Touch Designer, Processing, things like that. Well, in today's lesson, I wanted to show you a cool feature that's built into Malumin. Now, it used to be that you had to download a plugin. Now, there's a built-in plugin. So if you actually are in Malumin and you go up to Preferences and Add-ons, you'll see here it is, Plugin for After Effects. Um, so this is Particles, After Effects. These are for working with Connect sensors like Microsoft Connect. There's a gamepad interaction you can do. There's one for Cinema 4D, a great 3D platform, and one for Unity. Um, so we all you have to do is turn that on, restart Malumin, and then restart After Effects. And if you load something up in After Effects, you'll see up here under your Inputs panel, if I open that up, you'll see there's an After Effects icon. And that's what I've done here. This is actually an After Effects project that I have brought in. You see down here, there's the AE logo. And I'm gonna show you how I've kind of worked this a little bit um, and how this whole thing's set up, okay? So I'm gonna hide Malumin for a second. So when you go to open up After Effects, um, I have created basically a, um, a really fun, 3D looking cube, right? So these aren't actually 3D. These are just shape layers that I've created. And the way I created those is I went to File and New and Shape Layer. And uh, I'm not gonna go through the whole process, but I did a blank shape layer with a pen tool. And I just kind of drew this in, right? Um, and what's fun is I could draw this right into my environment and actually like do some of my mapping right inside of After Effects. Because you'll see, now that I have this going, if I pull up both at the same time, let me move my After Effects over so you can see both on the same screen. And I bring Malumin up. <clears throat> and I actually come back to it here for a second. We should see an updated timeline here. Let's see what's going on here. I think it's because I uh, didn't close that off. That one's working. Oh, you know why? It's because I have actually mapped out my area. So um, I would have to create, um, I've already mapped this guy. So you know what? We're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to create a new doc. There we go. Okay, cool. So let's go to input. After Effects has a little red X on it right now, um, just because I need to come back in here. And you s this is a little bug I've noticed, is that sometimes you just have to like move the timeline a little bit and then come back, and then After Effects appears fine with the logo again. So if you see that little red X, all you have to do is go back to After Effects. Let me close up some of these tabs so you can kind of see everything. Uh, and just move it a little bit, move the timeline. You definitely have to be like clicked in your composition window. And sometimes all you have to do is move the timeline a little bit and then boom, there's my After Effects icon. So if I drag that down now and hit play, there we go. Now you can see everything that's in there. So I've got this shape layer panel that I created, right? These little fills, and now I've got this guy as well. So I could literally like do this live. Like I could make Malumin be my bridge to my projector. You know, I could go to output and say, send this out. Right now it's going to my second monitor. And I could just map right from After Effects right into it. Now, I could also use some of the mapping tools in Malumin, of course. Um, but for right now, I'll just kind of move this off to the side so you can see both at the same time. Um, so I'm going to delete that one. That one's kind of ugly. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my pen tool again. And uh, let's create a new layer, shape layer. And these shape layers are great um, because... They have, um, they're just like creating vector shapes in Illustrator. And as a matter of fact, you can create complex shapes in Illustrator, bring them in as an Illustrator file, and then go to Layer and Create. And there's an option here that says Create Shape from Vector Layer. So it allows you to convert like a more complex Illustrator outline into a shape layer that then could be manipulated inside of After Effects, which is really, really powerful. So anyway, I can bring these in, <clears throat> and all of these could be different mapped surfaces, right? So I'll just go ahead and kind of like add this. I'll just bring this up so it kind of touches against the bottom of the other one there. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. And now I would have like a little surface out here on the ground, right? Like the box had like a, a lid that was unfolded or something like that. 
So you can see how this is all happening live one from the other. So just at a base level, a lot of folks will, like if I'm doing something in Malumen that I don't need to update live, like maybe I'm just doing a video mapping installation that's going to run on a loop. Well, if I did it with After Effects, I could map it all out in After Effects, run it through Malumen through the projector to get all that integration. And when I'm done, I could just render it out as a movie file and then come back to Maloom and load that movie file in and replace the After Effects input with the movie that I rendered out of After Effects. And it'll actually be pre-mapped and ready to go and you won't have to do anything, which is pretty awesome. I just did that for an installation that was just on a loop and it worked out really well. But I want to show you a couple cool features um, because I can take any object like this. Uh, you know, I'll do one more on this side. So I'm going to go ahead, layer again, new shape layer. And I'll grab my pen tool. And this time I'll change this color to say uh, orange. And let's create one more here. There we go. And um, you can always pull these up to kind of adjust their 3D, sense of 3D. Um, you can also, inside these shape layers, what's really cool is if you unfold the contents and the shape, you'll see there's a path in here. So there's like the main shape, which is like for scaling, and then if you unfold it, then there's the actual path in there. And the same thing is like if I brought something in from Illustrator, you just need to unfold it and then you'll see multiple paths inside depending on how complex your file is, right? So it's really cool that you can do that and then you can adjust all this on the fly. That's looking pretty good. It looks like the same 3D plane as maybe the green one's on. All right, so now I have all these surfaces. These are obviously different surfaces for each one here, right? Now, something I can do, um, well, I'll come back to it in a minute. And we'll take a look at it. These guys all have this little 3D axis on it because you can choose a layer that's 2D and then go to layer and say create a 3D layer. And then it'll actually be treated as a 3D object inside of After Effects, which we'll come back to in a minute. So I'll go ahead and turn those all into 3D layers and you'll you'll understand in just a minute. So now I'm going to go over to Malumen. Now this is all on one layer, right? That's that's the challenge like okay, so I could do the mapping inside of After Effects since it's pipeline through Malumen and that'd be fine, or I could just have these shapes and then still take advantage of some of the mapping tools. And one way to do that from a single layer is to kind of slice it up using a tool called the Slice Editor. So over here on the right in the Mapping column, uh, if I take this layer and I click on Slice Editor, I get this new window, right? And it just kind of, I can make this bigger if I want to and I can, you know, zoom in on it just to make it a little easier to work with. But this allows me to slice one layer into multiple kind of map slices, if that makes sense. So. I can draw out a square or a triangle, but I often use just this freeform one. And now I can control my slices and I can say, I want to make a slice for each of these different kind of three dimensional surfaces in my, um, in my layer that I brought in from After Effects. So there's one, so there's a slice, right? I'm going to bring that in just a little bit tighter. There we go. And you'll notice like everything else is disappearing because it's getting cropped, right? That's because it's sort of like masking and mapping just this area. So this is sort of like a, a masking of a mappable layer, if that makes sense. Uh, and then I can go ahead and say, um, I want to duplicate this layer. So if I come down to the bottom left of my screen and click on the plus scene, I can say copy the layer, right? And that just copied it, and now I can keep slicing. I can say, well, I don't want that one. I want the, the rhombus here since it's got that direction. And if I hold down Shift, it'll snap these points to where my other points were. So that I get a, it's a really nice feature in Malumen uh, when you have overlapping points. If you hold Shift, it'll make them snap right onto it. So this one, if I hold Shift, will snap onto that one for the red one. All right, that's pretty good. Now you'll see in my main window there I have red and green because I've done both of those. Let's do blue next. So again, I'll duplicate the layer, hit copy layer, and go to the freeform mapping, and we'll do the blue one. If I hold shift, it snaps to the red's corner. That goes to the red corner. And then I'll do this one kind of freestyle. And this one as well. Cool. So now I have my cube, and then I'll do two more. So another copy layer. And hold down shift to snap that one. Get that. Yeah. 
There we go. Snapping well there. And one more, one more copy layer. And we'll bring that one in. Holding s shift again to snap. All right, cool. So now I have all of those. And you'll see all my surfaces, which is really cool. And then I can close the slice editor. And now each of these, whoops, I bumped that a little bit. Now each of these can be mapped further, right? Just using the standard mapping tool. So then I could like, you know, move these guys around if I need to in my projection. So it gives me all that power. It's one layer that's been copied multiple times, but allows me to kind of be able to control these and map these in an interesting way. And then I can go back to my After Effects and use all the powerful things that After Effects has. So one thing that's really cool, um, that I wanted to show you from an earlier Maluman tutorial on this. I wanted to redo this because the other Maluman tutorial that's up on their website is a little outdated. Um, so up here, if I go to layer and composition, um, I can actually create a new uh, light. So this is gonna play, since I turned all of these objects into 3D layers, since I went and said, make that a 3D layer, I can bring in a 3D light in After Effects and say, yeah, that's good. We can always adjust it after the fact. And now I can, what's cool is I can actually like move my 3D light around and you see it's actually affecting those layers like it's a big 3D cube area inside. And I can move this light around and play around with the shape of it and all sorts of fun stuff, right? This is a kind of a, a cone light, which is really cool. Um, and there's all these layer controls inside of that light. If you unfold it here, I could bring in the cone angle a bit and uh, maybe the cone feather and intensity. Oh, you know what? That's a light that's that was, let's get rid of that one. There's my light down here. Sorry, I had closed a few things and bring it up to the top. There we go. Let's unfold that. There we go. I was wondering why that cone angle, see, there we go. Now we've got the cone angle there and I can pull, this is kind of like the focus of where the light is going. And this is the position. If I click on the light, I can mess around with its position in 3D space on the Y, the Z, so I can make it come in closer, or the X plane, just like I was working in a 3D app. So anyway, really cool features. This is just like one possibility of what you could do with After Effects and making these like pseudo 3D effects for a big mapping project. Obviously, After Effects has tons of other cool like plugins and all the animation capabilities and blah, blah, blah. Now, after Effects doesn't play things back in real time is a preview. You have to render it, but I can kind of preview it through Malumen on my surface. Then I render that video out after it's all been mapped. And then, like I said, I just come back to Malumen and I replace this little AE icon with my rendered movie and boom, everything fits. So it's a really cool way to kind of plan out a really complex animation. Like I said, I just did a mapping project that had two projectors and it probably had eight different little windows of video. And each of those windows had four or five HD, sometimes 4K video sources uh, all layered on top of each other. And it was just like too much for Malumen to handle in real time. So by doing it in After Effects and running it on a loop through Malumen, I kind of had the best of both worlds. I had all that power of After Effects animation tools plus Malumen's ability to map it into a space, particularly with multiple projectors. So hopefully that wasn't too complex. Hopefully that all makes sense for you and you can understand this relationship between using the plugin uh, from After Effects to Malumen and a few of the little bugs to watch out for because um, it can be really powerful and really um, get you some great results for future installations and complex architectural mappings and things like that. All right, that's it for today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and thanks for tuning in.